In this video, we will take a closer look at the lesson, Connecting a Verbal Description to Table and Graph. This lesson is the third lesson of Unit 1. Prior to this lesson, students would have had a recap of what is a function, which was previously introduced to them in Math 8, as, as well as a formal introduction to using function notation. As you can see, this is a one-day lesson. The I can statements that are covered in this lesson include showing the relationship between a real-world scenario as a verbal description, a table, and a pattern that can be derived from that table, which is an extension of the rule of four that students were introduced to in Math 8. In addition, students will discuss axes and scale a graph, as well as discuss the effects of coefficients and equations on graphs. This lesson has one standard as its focus, and that is standard number 12. In this lesson, students will explore patterns analyze a table of values, create a general function rule, analyze a graph, and answer questions. Students have had prior experience with all of these, with the exception of writing a function rule using function notation. The students are first introduced to this problem through a scenario. There are two students that will be enter, um, entering a problem-a-thon and they will be working problems and they will earn money based on the number of problems that they can complete. You have two people in this scenario, Jenny and Gennaro. So Jenny will earn two dollars per problem so looking at how her rule could be written using function notation, we're going to refer to her as G1. So Jenny's earnings are a function of the number of problems worked, and that is equal to $2 per problem. Gennaro earns $3 per problem. We're going to refer to him as G2. So Gennaro's earnings are a function of the number of problems worked and that is equal to $3 per problem. In this lesson, students will be given a graph that has already been um, scaled for them. That way it can keep the primary focus of this lesson on the analysis of the graph. You will, however, discuss the acronym LUTS which stands for Labels, Units, Title, and Scale. So we want the students to title the X and Y axis. We want them to understand what units is being used as well as the scale. So here we talk about, you can start to introduce them to terms such as domain and range. The domain would be the X values and in this case, you're trying to think about how many problems a Ginny and Gennaro could possibly work. So on this graph, we are using up to 100. And if we look at the scale, this is in increments of 10. So based on this, we're going to decide what our Y values would be. Since Gennaro is earning $3 per problem, he could earn up to $300, and so that's why the y-axis goes all the way up to $300. After students have graphed both data sets, you can have conversations about if they intersect anywhere, and if so, what is the ordered pair for that point. You can also discuss um, why Gennaro's graph may be steeper than um, Jenny's graph, will they? So your next steps are, as you're working the lesson, you're going to use your student hat as well as your teacher hat to complete the lesson. 
As you work the lesson, think about the following and make notes in the margins. This lesson will kind of become like your lesson plan for when you do this lesson in the fall. So what prerequisite skills are needed for students to be successful with this lesson? How will you group the students? Will you do pairs or groups of three, groups of four? How can you chunk the lesson? And what questions are especially important to discuss whole group? So in this lesson, questions to think about would be especially three, four, and five because they are using that function notation. It's important for students to understand how to both write an equation using function notation and in interpret a statement when it is written in function notation. For example, here on question five, g of one would represent Jenny, and this value inside the parentheses stands for a specific number of problems. So what they are asking is, what is Jenny's earnings for 30 problems? 